More millionaires are made during recessions than any other time. So how, how do they do it? So that's the thing, you wanna find the opportunity. And, and the way that you find the opportunity is first to understand how you get there because history doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. And so what happens is people say, oh, this happened in 2020, so it must happen again. Or this mm -hmm. happened in 2008, so this is probably gonna happen. Or this happened in 2001. That's not how it works. You have to understand what happened and how you're getting to where you are right now. That way you can look for the new opportunity because the opportunity is gonna be similar but different. And you mm. wanna be ready when times are okay and good and prepared. That way when things go bad, you can come in and pounce on the opportunity and take advantage of it. So you got the stock market, which is, you know, have it looks like record lows. It seems like every week it just keeps going down. You've got the crypto market, which is, and the NFT space, which yeah. it seems like it's going down and down, deeper into a hole. You've got the housing market, which seems like it's starting to take a turn uh, and might pop in this bubble. What, where is the biggest opportunity right sure. now? So let's talk about how we got here so you can yes. see where the opportunity will be. So in the past, for the number last number of decades, Anytime you saw an economic slowdown, the response was to create inflation. The response uh -huh. was to stimulate. So go back to 2001, when the dot-com bubble burst, we saw interest rates get cut, there was stimulus by the Federal Reserve Bank. So anytime you inject more money into the economy, it creates inflation. Same thing happened in 2008. The 2008 bubble, real estate bubble burst, and then we saw a new quantitative easing. We saw cutting of interest rates. More money was injected into the economy. Same thing in 2020 on a extremely bigger, much bigger level. 2008 right. was the largest quantitative easing in the history of time. And 2020 blew past that. It was like five, 10 times it more, right? It was significantly more. And uh, so what happens is when you create more money, it reduces the value of your dollars. This is what inflation is. Inflation mm. comes from the word inflate. Mm. So, so what we do you print inflate? a lot of money to put it into the economy, right? New money, which creates inflation, correct? Right, and it, it, the value of your dollar goes down causing the price of things to go up. So when 2020 happened, we started printing more money and injecting this into the stock market, into corporations, and into people in the form of stimulus checks and unemployment. Mm. So what did that do? Well, in 2020, we saw the fastest and most severe stock market crash in history. It exceeded the rate of the Great Depression. Wow. And then what happened? The Fed opened up the money printer and boom, boom shot right back up. It was the fastest stock market growth in the history of time. Which, if you think about that, we had the fastest stock market crash in the history of time, and then we had the fastest stock market recovery in the wow. history of time. How is that possible? Well, we printed an insane amount of new money. And when that happened, we created something called unlimited quantitative easing, where they essentially just said that they would print and do whatever it takes to help recover markets. Well, when you start printing all of this money without producing more products, because now you remember the world is shut down, what happens? We have people who have money and nothing is being produced. Uh -huh. So now if you have money and you can buy stuff, but nothing's being produced, what's gonna happen? You start shopping and things get bought, and all of a sudden companies can't keep producing the product products that they had before. Now you start to create supply chain issues. Uh -huh. So now this started creating supply chain issues and then this caused the price of things to go up even more because now companies say, well, I don't have more mugs to sell you. I only have a few, so I'm gonna have to raise the price of these mugs. And now you start to go down this inflationary spiral because now that people need more money to buy things, they go to their boss and they say, hey, look, I need more money. Right. It's more expensive to yeah. survive. Then your boss pays you more money, hopefully. And then your company says, our costs have just gone up. People need more money. So what do we need to do? We need to charge more for our products. Now you charge more for your products, people need more money, it starts to create the spiral. So that was the issue that kind of led us to where we are now. And up until just a few months ago, inflation was supposedly transitory. It was supposedly this temporary thing that would just magically go away. But the interesting thing though, mm. if we go into a little bit of data, I don't wanna get too confusing, but the interesting thing though is there's really no clear answer as to how much money was created. We have ideas, but if you look at this thing called M1, which is the amount of money out there, you can go to Google search uh, Fed M1, they have a chart of it. And what you'll see is that in the beginning part of 2020, there was just under $4 trillion of money out there, M1. And then now, today, there's over $20 trillion out there in M1. 
of, of money, actual money. dollars. It, of, now, let me say, what, the reason why I'm saying it this way is because when the pandemic hit, the Fed started creating more money, but they also changed the definition of money. M1, which is the definition of money out there, as soon as it started opening up quantitative easing, they changed the definition of it. Why? Now, there's no real answer for this, but my guess would be that if people knew exactly how much money was printed mm -hmm. by the Fed, then people would be more of an uproar of what's going on because then they would see, holy cow, you're printing all this money, making businesses rich, making investors rich, making regular people poorer because inflation disproportionately mm -hmm. hurts the financially uneducated and the financially poor because guess what? Now, your gas is more expensive, your groceries are more expensive, you're expensive, your rent is more expensive, right. but your wages aren't keeping up with it. Unless you had a 20% wage increase, your cost of living is probably outperforming your mm -hmm. wages. So that's what's happening in terms of money. We had an insane amount of money printing being done. And in addition to that, we also saw interest rates get cut. What are interest rates and how does that have anything to do with inflation? Well, the Federal Reserve Bank is the Federal Reserve Bank. However, they're not federal. It says so on their website. They're not a reserve mm. because they don't keep any cash reserves. And they're not a bank. You and I can't go there to deposit money or do any banking. Right. So the Federal Reserve Bank, while it's not federal or reserve or a bank, they control our monetary supply. They control our money. There's two ways that they can do that. One is through interest rates and the other is through printing money. So through interest rates, they have the ability to raise and cut interest rates. When we are in a mm. slowing economy, a recession, they cut interest rates to stimulate spending because our economy runs on spending. If I have $1,000 in my pocket and I go to Amazon and I spend this $1,000, well, Amazon has more money to hire more employees, invest in more infrastructure, do more mm. things in the business. But if I keep that money in my pocket, they're not making as much money and they can't keep growing. So our economy runs on spending. And when you cut interest rates, spending goes up. When mortgage rates drop to 2.5%, people want to go and buy a home. Mm -hmm. People want to go out and buy more cars. People want to go out and spend money because it's not as expensive. Right. And businesses do the same thing. Institutions are going to go out and borrow an insane amount of money because it's cheap. If I can borrow money, $100 million at 3% a year, and I can grow my company at 5% a year, <sighs> I'm gonna do that all day long, right? And that's what institutions did. So more money gets injected into the economy when interest rates are down. So that's what happens typically when you're in a recession. It creates more inflation, mm -hmm. right? Because you're adding more money yes. to the economy. However, it helps to stimulate the economy. Now, when you're in a growing economy and you wanna cool down the economy, you wanna cool down inflation, you do the opposite. You start raising interest rates, making it more expensive to buy a home, making it more expensive to live. And then you also, can, in this case, remove cash out of the economy. This is what the Fed is trying to do now. How do you remove it out of the economy? So the Fed is, well, interest rates and then their balance sheet. And I'll talk about interest yeah. rates first and I'll go into the balance sheet. So the Fed right now is raising interest rates because they want to slow down inflation. So when you raise interest rates, what happens? It's more expensive to buy a home now. So less it, people buy. Less people buy. Less cash enters our economy, less institutions borrow money, less corporations borrow money. So borrowing goes down, less dollars enter our economy. The second side is the balance sheet. So this one's kind of interesting because you have to understand a little bit of how <clears throat> money works on the government side without going into politics. So the government is not a for-profit entity. They don't sell products for money, right? What they do is they get their money from tax dollars. People mm. like you and me, right? We pay taxes and then the government spends money. So when the government spends less than what they bring in, no problem. Their tax dollars cover it and then they have a surplus in case one year they overspend. Yeah. But that's not what happens here. We spend more money than what we bring in. So that's why we have this national debt of $30 trillion, this national deficit. Um, and so how do you cover that? Well, if you spend more money than what you bring in, you can do a few things. You can raise taxes, which is going to make people angry if your taxes go up. And so you can't always do that. Second is you can go out and you can borrow money. You can go and uh, raise debt. So that's what the government does. They go borrow money from countries like China and Japan. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be a limit to how much money you can borrow. So if you can't borrow enough money from different countries, then what's left? Well, then you can issue something called a treasury bond, which is 
where now anybody, people like you and me, anybody listening to this can go and lend money to the United States government. Mm -hmm. But if the government is running a big deficit, meaning let's just say they need to raise $4 trillion, where are they going to get this money? Well, if they can't get that money from regular people, then they're going to call up the Fed and they're going to say, hey, Fed, we want to issue $3 trillion of treasury bonds. No one's going to buy it. Can you help us out? Now, remember, the Fed doesn't have cash piles sitting there. So what do they do? They print $3 trillion, Jeez. give it to the government. This money's created out of thin air. Now, the government has this $3 trillion. Inflation just happened. And then the government is able to now spend this money without any sort of taxation. However, you still pay the price. The most expensive kind of money that there is is free money. Because now when the government gets this money for free out of thin air, Everybody pays the price and the person who pays the price disproportionately are the poor mm. and the financially uneducated because now you have to pay for inflation. Your wages don't stretch as far. Your savings don't go as far. And now your cost of living is significantly higher. So you're becoming poorer each and every day. Inflation hurts the poor. And the reason I'm not even talking about the middle class is because inflation is the reason why the middle class is getting wiped out. Mm, it's turning into more it's poor. It's turning more into either poor or the wealthy. Because if you understand what's going on here, you're going to change the way that you use your money and it creates this divide. So more and more inflation creates a bigger wealth gap. And that's what we're seeing happen mm. now. Some people during the pandemic became insanely wealthy. Yes. You know, they talk about how uh, the richest Americans had gained billions and billions of dollars worth of wealth. Well, the poorest Americans saw no change. Yeah. And so when the cost of living is going up so significantly and you don't understand this, you're being screwed over by the system and you don't even see it happen. So that's the issue with inflation. And if it get, becomes a real big problem, well, then you can run into some sort of currency crisis or you can run into an issue where the government can default on their debt. Mm. And this is an issue that's wow. actually happening right now, not in the United States, but Sri Lanka. They just defaulted on their debt, the country. Really? What does that mean? <laughs> we have so much debt. We have spent so much money. We have no way to make the payments. We're going to default. And now the currency goes into collapse. Inflation goes through the roof. The economy goes to down. Wow. It, it's a big problem. And it creates a lot of civil unrest. So that is the worst case scenario because now it's you're worried not only about the economy, but you're worried about the currency. And you're worried about being able to find food. You're being able to, like, food becomes a scarcity. And right now, because of the inflation issue, not just in the United States, but around the world, the World Bank said that about a dozen countries are on the verge of a potential debt default. Wow. Because of all of the inflation that's going on. So it's a real issue. And most of us have no idea it's happening. That's why it's known as the hidden tax, the mm -hmm. silent tax. It Everybody pays the price. And if you don't know you're paying the price, you're the one that's probably paying the biggest price. <laughs> right. So this is where it's so important to get educated on that. So what would be the thing if there was an, the biggest opportunity to create wealth right now? Yeah. What industry or sector would that be? Is that in these you know, sure. stocks? I feel, like, I feel like nothing is stable. Like if you're going to put yeah. money in something, you could make a lot or you could lose it all sure. within a month. Is it the stocks? Is it the crypto? NFT space? Is it the housing? Is it, you yeah. know, investing in yourself in another way? What would you say <laughs> we should be investing in? Absolutely. So the first, so the answer is going to be looking for where the opportunity happens. Okay. So 2008 well, yes, was me. real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the biggest real estate opportunity in, in our lifetimes. In 2020, it was stocks and crypto. In 2020, the stock market from its bottom to the end of 2020 grew by 60%. The crypto market grew by almost 600%. And so it's and fun. if you didn't get out, you'd if probably you come back to Of course. Yeah. But this is where, you know, again, the psychology of your investing mm. is so important. But the thing that you want to pay attention to now is it's it's you want to see where things are going. Yes. That way you can make the right moves. Remember, history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. If you enjoyed this short clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love. And while you're at it, if you're interested in learning more about how to start generating passive income, our team put together an amazing guide on how to start generating passive income for free. All you gotta do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching, and as always, keep hustling. <laughs>